Hi, I'm Liv and welcome back to The Book Nook. Hey guys, so, slight change to scheduled programming. Well, it is and it isn't because I was thinking of doing this video if the stuff arrived in time, and it has, so I am. So this video is going to be a little Norse haul. So basically I ordered myself some stuff from the guys over at Ravenforge. This is not a sponsored video or anything, I just ordered some stuff and thought I would share it with you. So Ravenforge are literally a forge and they make like weapons and shit. And I didn't get myself some weapons because I do not trust myself with a knife or a sword or an axe. Although I do want an axe, an axe would be cool. Basically, as well as weapons and stuff, they also do other Viking-related merchandise. So, you may remember I'd bought myself a Viking drinking horn cup and it smelled like ass and was not usable, I do not think. No, no. But I got myself a drinking horn mug from the guys at Ravenforge because they seal these with resin inside, which means they stinky less. And look at it. Ah. It's freaking awesome, guys. So it does still have a bit of a smell to it, I'm not gonna lie, but nowhere near as bad. Doesn't smell like the inside of an animal. It smells like it's been adjacent to the inside of an animal for like a while. Slightly tricky to drink from because of the shape of it and because that goes up, I've spilled it down three t-shirts so far this morning. So this is the third t-shirt today. And there is like a little bit of a tang to the orange squash that I'm drinking, but I did also brush my teeth. So everything's happening in my mouth, careful. But basically this drinking horn mug is awesome. As I got myself a drinking horn mug, I thought, well, I will get myself some stuff to go in it. Why the devil not? So the first thing I got was a bottle of sparkling moon juice. Moon juice. It's apple mead. Literally, it's got four ingredients. Honey, apple juice, yeast, and water. Sounds good to me. So, excited to drink that. I thought about drinking it while I was doing this video, but that could have just gone badly wrong. Then another bottle of something that I will definitely not be filling the mug up with because that's a big old mug and it is blurred. It is a mead and cherry wine mix and sorry, the ring light is not great for this. And this is actually brewed, fermented, made by the guys at Lindisfarne Limited, which are actually a mead makery, that's a word, on the island of Lindisfarne, which of course with the Vikings, uh, that was where they did a load of bad shit and took some monks. I also got myself a twisted forged arm torque because one of the things that, you know, they're a forge. Um, this is really cool. I have discovered, so I show you, no, it's not going to work. Yeah, it's never going to focus well on this. Um, I have discovered with this, it is made for people with skinnier arms than mine. Ooh, it's cold. Like I can get it on and it's cool, but it would obviously look cooler on skinnier arms, but whatever. And they also sent me a little sticker and a little tiny badge, which is always fun. I love it when places send you things like this. But you know, the main event, all about that horn. Not the first time I've said that. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to get some practice in with this if I wanna drink quickly and not just splosh it all over my face. So that's my little haul from Ravenforge. I treated myself. Why not? Treat yourself. It's the wrong time of year for that, but nope, it's not. Treat yourself all year round. As I say, this isn't sponsored by them or anything. I spent my own hard earned cash on it and just thought it would be cool to share. Continuing the Norse Hall though, I have obviously bought myself some books because I don't even need shops to be open properly to acquire, to acquire four books in one day. Three of those four books were Norse related, so I'm going to share them with you. So the first one is Vikings by Elsa Rostal, and this is a non-fiction look at the Vikings. This is one that comes really highly recommended by pretty much anyone who has anything to do with sort of Viking or Norse history. So really excited to dig into that one. Then I thought to myself, you know what was always really good as a grounding in history? Horrible histories. So I got myself a copy of Vicious Vikings. It's shiny. It's very shiny. Like horrible histories are great as a primer for history. The basics and just making it fun and approachable and I thought you know what when I don't quite have the brain space to sit and read something more you know academic serious proper adult grown-up non-fiction but I want to get some knowledge on the go that's what horrible histories are great for. In a similar vein with things that are sort of more approachable and for younger readers I got myself a copy of Janina Ramirez's Riddle of the Runes. This is I think it's sort of 9 to 12 and it's about a young girl who is an investigator and she's a viking and she goes off to solve mysteries and it has something to do with the runes and I just thought it sounded really cool. So that's my little viking norse haul I thought I'd share with you guys. I have got another bottle of mead downstairs that I got at the beginning of the month but that's just from Waitrose. It's not quite as exciting. So aside from the other stuff that I've already said in earlier videos about the other videos that I'm going to do through the course of this month and I'm aware we're approaching halfway through the month already so I've got to get a wiggle on and hopefully it won't be sort of like too much Norse Viking content foisted upon you, particularly those who don't come to my channel for this. And I realise that 
not as many people are watching my Norse videos, but that's okay. People come here for different things and I will get back to regular programming, uh, talking about, you know, non-Viking related books in due course, so stick around. Also, even if you think you don't like the idea of some of my Viking videos, just maybe just give them a watch. I don't know, do what you want. But with regards to the end of the month, there are two things going on that I'm gonna give a shout out to. Number one, on the 20th of November, it is Lauren at Lauren and the Books Cozy Reading Night. Lauren has kind of re-established the stay at home club over lockdown 2.0 and is doing a couple more cozy reading nights. I've missed a lot of them because they have clashed with D&D, &D, but for this one, Friday the 20th, I'm gonna be joining in and obviously I'm gonna be reading all things Viking and Norse and probably getting slowly drunk on mead by myself. Then the next day, the very next day, the 21st of November to the 29th of November, not sure why I'm talking like the Queen, turns out I'm quite excited about the crown coming back. 21st to the 29th of November is Simon over at Savage Reads Book Hibernation, the autumn edition. So Simon has done a video talking about the prompts for book hibernation and the sort of theming. And because I am the queen of a shoehorn, I am going to try and make it work with some Viking and Norse stuff. So here's what I'm thinking. The basic prompts, we've got a book with a green cover, read a book with mystery or secret or haunting or vanishing in the title, read a book with a bird on the cover, and read a sensation novel or sensation short story. So there's a theme going on there, and I'm going to shoehorn my own theme in. I'm not shoehorning my own theme into that, I'm just making it work for me. So for a book with green on the cover, I'm gonna go for The Poetic Edda. I'm gonna keep reading some more of that. Oh, let's just not bother with the ring light, I'll just put thingies up. The Poetic Edda, Jackson Crawford's edition, which has green on the cover, so we're going for that. Next up is a book with mystery or secret or vanishing or haunting in the title. I have tried Googling the shit out of like, mystery Vikings, history Vikings, secret Vikings, secret vanishing Vikings, it doesn't work. So I'm gonna be super, super cheeky. And I figure if something is like mystery and haunting, it could also be a riddle. So I'm gonna go with Riddle of the Runes, why not? Next up is a book with a bird on the cover. Now I have discovered that for a mythology whose main dude, Odin, has two ravens and they're like pretty damn important in the overall mythology scheme of things, Fuck all books with birds on the front. Nary a book with a bird on the cover. Couldn't find it. Was looking for ravens. Was going through my stack of Norse books. Nary a raven. I did some more Googling, and the only book that I can find that was on my reading list anyway is Scott Odell, I think's Gathering of Ravens. So this is a fiction book, and it's more to do with, I think, as Norse beliefs and Norse myths were fading out of favour and into Christianity. So it just sounds really cool, so I'm going to give that one a read. Then in terms of a sensation novel or short story, now I know sensation novels are, it's a Victorian thing, it's a that era thing, but the closest I can get is the saga of the Volsungs and with the saga of Ragnar Lothbrok as well, because it's one of these legendary heroic sagas that we talked about in the last video, check out the link down below, it's going to be pretty sensational, so I'm going with that. Now the extra berry prompts that Simon's done, the first one is to read Lady Audley's Secret along with them because apparently it hits all the basic bear prompts. That one I am not gonna be going with because I'm doing my Viking thing. Extra berry prompt two is to read a sensational non-fiction book. Now I would think that pretty much any Viking book is gonna be a pretty sensational, but I'm going with Horrible Histories because the way they present things is gonna be pretty sort of sensational and out there, so I'm going with that. But one that I toyed with using for that one, but I think also works for this one, is the third extra berry prompt, and that is a book with an autumnal cover. Now, I'm going with Vikings by Elsa Roestal because if you look at it, Okay, no, I'm gonna put the thingy up. It's got the autumnal feel for me in terms of the autumnal colours, so that's what I'm going with. So I'm making the autumnal book hibernation work for me. I'm sorry, Simon, if that is a complete bastardization of the rules, but I'm doing it. And as I say, stay at home, cozy reading night on Friday the 20th as well. That's gonna be an evening of mead and books, and I'm probably just gonna crack out some Leukusian because why not? So that was uh, an inadvertently whirlwind video. Sorry about that, not quite sure why my energy's so up, but I'm just riding it out. So thanks to the guys at Ravenforge for making cool shit that I bought. And are any of you guys gonna be joining in with Cozy Reading Night and or Autumn Book Hibernation? Have a little chat in the comments below. I'm gonna go and make another coffee because that's definitely what I need. I'm also gonna go and try and figure out where to stick this sticker. I love getting stickers, but I never know where to put them. Ooh, probably on my laptop. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again for another Norse November video. Goodbye.